Now is Sam Zhao. He's director of the Center for China-U.S. Cooperation at the University of Denver. Doesn't seem to be a lot of uh, China-U.S. cooperation right now. Sam, um, put things in perspective for us. Uh, this move by China on sorghum coming a day after the U.S. took these steps against ZTE. Where does that put these frictions between these two countries? China, I think, is a position is positioning itself uh, to the preparation of the next month in May when those uh, uh, items the Trump has announced uh, to be uh, put in effect into implementation. And uh, also China, I think, is a very um, vulnerable position. In fact, uh, today we heard that the U.S. Uh, Commerce Department already uh, announced the sanctions against the one China company banning the sale of uh, the chips uh, to that Chinese company. And uh, China relies upon the imports of the U.S. technology. So the China's uh, imports uh, from U.S. those kind of agricultural uh, products uh, in comparison with this kind of high-tech um, uh, product is a very small uh, proportion. And also the impacts on the Chinese economy is also very different. So what I will see, what China did to, uh, this announcement about the uh, shortening is uh, uh, one small step. But it's a very strong indication that China is going to fight back. But I don't think China is in a very, very strong position to fight back. In fact, the, the Commerce Department announcement about the sanction on this China's high-tech company already caused big, I think, turmoil in the Chinese uh, economic circles. Uh, uh, the stock market is uh, crumbling, and uh, a lot of concerns has to be raised. So the trade wall will hurt both countries, but also will hurt China very seriously. So in that context, uh, what you mentioned earlier, that uh, China is opening its domestic market on the automobile and the financial sectors. I think those are also a good indication that China is willing to negotiate, willing to do everything to avoid the trade war. It, uh, when people, mm -hmm. well, I was just yeah. going to say, you know, when you look at South Korea and their recent agreement with the United States, it seems if there are some concessions that Donald Trump can claim victory, uh, and that's enough. I mean, how far does China have to go? in that regard to uh, please the Trump administration, do you think? We don't know how far it will go, but uh, as you said, uh, mostly I think uh, President Trump is uh, bluffing on uh, some issues, but he is also serious uh, to get some concessions, at least to save his face, to uh, complete uh, his uh, campaign uh, uh, pledges uh, as he campaigned to, uh, um, against China uh, on fair trade practice. So he is facing midterm inaction and a um, lot of domestic challenges. So he needs uh, some deliverables. So China has to show clearly that uh, China would uh, meet some of the U.S. demands. And uh, I think China has been talked uh, very openly on those issues. Uh, so we don't know how far China has to do. But uh, I think uh, Trump would not uh, uh, cannot do what he talked that uh, his talk. So he has to also make some kind of concessions on this and is to uh, stop when he saved his face. Uh, this is sort of like a chess match. Instead of pawns and bishops, you've got sorghum and soybeans and chips and all of that. Um, what do you think's the next move uh, as we watch this uh, from a distance? Uh, what do you think's going to happen next? I think on China's side, China will continue to make some small steps. Uh, on the one hand, to open its market to show it's uh, making responses. On the other hand, it showed it's uh, also first that uh, they have the ability to retaliate to force the Trump to make some kind of uh, stop at a certain point. On the U.S. side, I think I, Trump talks very tough. But how far he could deliver his uh, tough threats, we have to see. And uh, that will have to wait until next month. We'll see if uh, U.S. could uh, do more than what they talked about. But what I think the uh, Trump, the, the uh, Commerce Department decision today, I think that's a very significant. I see that. That's a much more significant than those ban technology imports from China. The technology exports to China, I think, is more threatening to China's economic uh, well-being. Sam Zhao joining us from Denver. Thanks so much for your analysis.